Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, today we have a 17th lesson in the series Atomic Scale Design uh, for Newbies. And uh, today our guest teacher uh, is Paulina Kostina. She is a student uh, in nanobiology program in Technical University of uh, Delft, it's uh, Netherlands. So, um, Paulina, what are you going to talk uh, to us today? What are you going to teach us? Uh, good morning. Uh, I would like to tell you more about enzymes today and proteins in general, maybe a little bit more. So, um, okay, go ahead. Well, we're all ears. <laughs> Can you please give me oh, permission? Just a second. Yes, yeah, security shares the screen, and I'll make you co host just in case. Yeah. Thank you. So, let's go. Yes, here we go. So today, again, I would love to talk about proteins and enzymes. And just in case, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me uh, on Telegram. So what are we going to talk about today? First of all, I will give some general theory about <coughs> enzymes, its definition properties, key mechanisms, and then we will basically switch to some practice. We will play around with chymotrypsin using a program PyMol. It's a program that allows us to actually model or see different molecules, or even build our own. And then I will suggest something if you want to know more. So enzymes in general. Uh, enzymes are catalysts in biochemical reactions. Catalysts are just substances which are speeding up the reaction. So as we can see, we have substrates and products, but to get products, substrates have to overcome the energetic barrier, uh, the activation energy, and then to jump over it, they're getting products. But at the same time, this barrier is very high and catalysts in general and enzymes they are lowering that barrier. So they are lowering the activation energy. So the reaction goes faster and easier. So that's the basic definition. And then of course they have some key properties. For example, they're speeding up the reaction, but at the same time, they're not consumed or modified itself. So they can maybe interact with substrates, but at the same time, they are not uh, participants of the chemical reaction. Then um, those catalysts and enzymes are very efficient. So reaction rate is increasing about a million times. It's just insanely a lot. Then it's a diverse range of reactions. So there are hundreds and thousands of reactions which are possible only thanks to enzymes and then those enzymes they are very specific because it depends really on the size of interacting molecules on their shapes provided by tertiary protein structure or even the charge because we have charged or uncharged uh, amino acid residues and then it's also specific for different conditions, for example, for the temperature or acidity, because, for example, in inorganic chemistry, the, that range is quite wide. But at the same time, if it's by chemical reaction, we should keep in mind that it's a living organism. So here, the difference is just a couple of degrees, for example. So. In this case, they should be very specific. And also many enzymes, they couldn't work without small cofactors, for example, metals or vitamins, which are binding to enzymes and they can work together with that complex. And of course, their basic mechanisms, they basically have the same main objectives, but they're making it in different ways. So as you can see, hand-drawn amazing pictures. So here we have an active site, which is very specific to the substrate. So it's represented by shape, for example, of the enzyme. And then they are binding. So 
we are forming enzyme substrate complex. Here we are getting modifications, maybe some intermediate products, and then the final product is released and enzyme is ready to work again. And there are three mechanisms. So first of all, it's covalent catalysis. There is a temporary covalent bond between substrate and enzyme because if we remember key properties, it shouldn't be a permanent modification. Then uh, it can be acid-based catalysis. Uh, again, we have very unstable charged inter intermediate, which is tending to break back to substance rather than to product. That's why enzyme can stabilize that intermediate, so reaction can proceed. And basically the same mechanism with stabilization of charged intermediates is made by metal ion catalysis, but here we have electron transfer rather than proton transfer. Do you maybe have any questions so far? Very good. So actually what I wanted to comment that uh, for our reaction in biology, there is no alternative to go without catalyst because the temperature will be so high that everything, uh, so the organism would not exist under such conditions. Yes, and since it's living organism, it's better to keep it been living. So, and one specific enzyme I would like to talk about, it's uh, camatrypsin. It's a digestive enzyme, which is made in pancreas. It's derived from its inactive precursor called chymotrypsinogen. And the main purpose of that enzyme is to hydrolyze, to break down peptide bone, bonds in proteins. And it's quite interesting to study because there is a very interesting structure, which is common, which is present in many, basically, enzymes, which are hydrolyzed peptide bonds. It's called catalytic triad. So it's histidine, aspartate, and serine. As we can see from numbers, it's a number of amino acid in the sequence. Those are not next to each other in primary or secondary structure, but when we have a folding of a protein, they are coming together. They have some uh, interactions between each other. And they're special because they actually provide that uh, hydrolysis of peptide bonds. So now it's time to actually play with that molecule in PyMol. So PyMol, it's a program which is accessible on the internet. And it's very convenient because we can find basically on the internet uh, the code, four letters code of any protein, and then just insert it there and we can open it. And it's already possible to measure some bones or whatever else. So for example, if we want to find it uh, on the internet, I already have it here open, but I will show you quickly. So for example, we have protein data bank. It's already something I played before. So here we want to find, I don't know, chymotrypsin basically, or inhibitor, whatever, just to show you. So we have a molecule here, not here, but okay, chymotrypsin one. So we can find the molecule and the code here, but it doesn't really work for some reason, but we can also find a code on the internet. And here, what is convenient, we don't really have to go and download and then convert in different types of files. Here, we can go just in the menu, get PDB. And here, if we found that code, we just insert it here and download the molecule. And so it's open here beautifully. And here, as we can see, we cannot get like that much information. So, just the only thing that uh, serine is made yellow, so we can see those bones here. So how to modify the view? We can go to show, show us um, cartoon. So it's nice and beautiful here. We can already see some structural motifs. How does it look like? Here we can see, for example, alpha helids or maybe beta sheets, which are making here the structure called 
beta barrel. So if we are just playing with that around, we can see that it actually looks like barrel. And here we have triad, a special structure, which I was talking about. And here it's a selection. We can, uh, for example, zoom it in, mm, action zoom. Here we don't really see it yet, but we can go again to try it, select, deselect, show as, uh, let's go for sticks. So we basically can see what I showed you at the slide, but in 3D. So those residues, they are present here and they are pointing to each other. And also we can see that selection of triad. Uh, it's highlighted in the sequence of the protein. And also what I wanted to show you, it's the alignment of uh, chymotrypsin and chymotrypsinogen. So precursor, inactive one, and the active enzyme. So here, for example, if it's too big, we can turn off the sequence, but I prefer sequence anyways. So here we can turn off on chymotrypsinogen. So we can see it's blue. Chymotrypsin, the active enzyme is uh, purple. Z pocket, it's an active site, but of chymotrypsinogen. And A pocket, it's for chymotrypsin. So here we also can see that it's aligned quite nicely. So there is not much modification while there is a maturation of enzyme. But for example, what is interesting here, if we are rotating, we can see that, huh, there's the difference. We spotted that, we can select it, we can highlight it basically. Um, then we can zoom it in, like selection, select, deselect, um, what we can do. And see that basically there was 180 degrees rotation during the process of making an active enzyme with an active one. So, so what uh, I forgot to ask you what uh, what is there um, what are uh, so basically what type of actions are uh, which turn hamotrypsin gen into hamotrypsin? Is it the change of pH in the organism or is it a more kind of like a chemical reaction? Do you remember that? Not really, but I believe it's mostly about interactions with other peptides because it's so basically the peptides are their, so okay all yeah right. so it's all interconnected because it should be active only when there is actually food to process actually proteins to break down so it should be made only when it's needed so it can be triggered okay, so other the proteins say hey there is food here hey. <laughs> yes, basically. so yes and maybe you have any other questions about molecules? Because I want to go back to the slides so we can reset it. How it was? No. Nope. Yeah, all, all clear. Yeah. So, but yeah, basically they're very, very, very similar except uh, slight modification in the reaction center, right? Indeed, because we see it's in a Z pocket, so it's in active site. In this case, um, yes, we did play <laughs> with the uh, mole. And if you want to know more, there is an amazing website called edX. It's an educational platform. It's open. So you can see lectures for free. You can uh, get an MIT course called Biochemistry, Biomolecules, Methods, Mechanisms. Um, to get a diploma there, you have to pay. but just to be an auditor is for free. And it's amazing. You can look, get a lot of information for that. And there are two great textbooks. It's Principles of Biochemistry by Leninger and Molecular Biology uh, of the Cell by Alberts. Those are considered to be college student books, but actually it's quite accessible for the level of high school students. So check this out. That's it, I think. Yep. So in this case, if you don't have any questions, thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you so much, Paulina. It was quite a good interest in there. 
uh, lesson and uh, I actually I wish you a, a great success in your further studies. And so I'm pretty sure you will be good researchers or designer of, uh, of biomolecules, whatever you choose for your career. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.